I'm Dean Kariakis, uh, president of the Christ Hospital Heart and Vascular Institute, clinical professor of medicine at the Ohio State University and deputy editor of J. Sky. I'm here this evening with Dr. Sheng Zan Tu from the Biomedical Instrument Institute, the School of Biomedical Engineering in Shanghai and Jiao Tong University. Dr. Bo Zhu from Fuwai Hospital National Center for Cardiovascular Diseases the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences in Beijing, and Dr. William Wins from the Science Foundation in Ireland. He's a professor of interventional cardiology at the Lamb Institute for Translational Medicine uh, in the National University of Ireland in Galway. He's director of the Smart Sensors Lab. I'd like to start this evening uh, we're to discuss a paper that will appear in JSKY entitled Quantitative flow ratio based on Murray fractal law, the accuracy of single versus two angiographic views. And this addresses an exciting emerging field of angiography-based FFR measurements. And we'll start by asking Dr. Tu, who's a co-author on this paper, to describe QFR findings of the study and the implications. Dr. Tu, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Karakas. Uh, it's my uh, great privilege to present uh, this uh, study on behalf of all the authors who contribute to the study. Um, I'm going to start with the background. Um, as some of you might know that the QFR or quantity flow ratio is uh, um, a technology to calculate FFR from uh, angiogram without the need to use pressure well or adenosine. Now, however, it need to uh, optimal and your projection and study have shown that uh, this would decrease the feasibility, especially in retrospective study, where uh, sometimes you don't have to good view. Uh, and second, uh, the sync sirens were not uh, reconstructed, so uh, the methodology had to assume that a linear tapping reference vessel, and this might be less accurate uh, in uh, in bifurcation reason. And, in addition, uh, uh, the operator, the anal an analyst, need to perform the many frame counting. So this would prolong the procedure time and increase the variability. A previous study shows that the analysis time of the uh, first generation of QFR take at least four minutes. And so, yeah, this is the background. We developed the second generation of QFR. We call it new QFR. So the new QFR allows Calculate calculation of FFR from a single angiographic view, and we have shown that uh, this has been has reached high feasibility. And second, uh, with the, the side branch reconstruction, so as you can see from the figure here, all the side branches of the main vessel were reconstructed. So this would uh, allow the uh, calculation of the reference vessel in a step down phenomenon. Uh, which would in, increase the diagnostic accuracy, uh, especially in bifurcation reason. In addition, uh, artificial intelligence has been applied in, in this uh, QFR calculation. So this would uh, improve the efficiency and reduce the analysis time to less than one minute. So the methodology has been uh, shown in the previous paper. However, there are two important questions remain. First, how to select the optimal angiographic view for single view mu QFR calculation? Second, what's the accuracy of single view mu QFR compared to two view QFR? So these are the two M of the uh, present study. So this is the um, uh, methodology. So uh, from the Fever to China study population, uh, most of the patients were acquired with the angiographic view according to the protocol. So we specified as protocol specified recommend view. But from one of the pro protocol recommend view, we calculate mu QFR. With, uh, so this is the first mu QFR. And from the second protocol recommend view, we calculate the second uh, time to mu QFR. As you can see, there are some difference here, uh, numerical difference. However, uh, both are uh, hemodynamically significant. And during the most sophisticated uh, 3D reconstruction, we also uh, analysis the 3D mu QFR from these two projections, uh, including the main vessel and side branch. Uh, as you can see, uh, the 3D mu QFR 
Als dat zo is, dat is het hier niet. Hebben we er niks in te zien? In dit slide is de study flow chart. So in total, 306 hazen and 330 vessels were analyzed. Uh, we exclude 50 uh, vessels which were not acquired according to the protocol recommend deal. So uh, in the end, uh, 280 vessels from 262 hazen uh, were acquired uh, according to the protocol recommend deal within the 10 degree uh, tolerance. Uh, the right image shows the distribution of the two view. Uh, the jump of LED is the first view and is the second view. And so we compute nuclear power from the first view and compute nuclear power from the second view and also the 3D. Uh, and using the well based FFI reference, we calculate the diagnostic accuracy for each, uh, each uh, nuclear fire. So this slide shows the main results. As you can see, that the the nuclear fire calculated from the first view and the second view at the comparable diagnostic accuracy and also comparable to 3D uh, nuclear fire. The ROC curve uh, at the right figure also shows that uh, this 3 uh, nuclear fire has comparable diagnost diagnostic performance. Now, the clinical implication is that single view nuclear fire overcome the limitation of two view, which improves visibility and maintain diagnostic accuracy. Either uh, one of the two protocols specified acquisition view is reliable to compute nuclear fire, which can simplify uh, clinical flow, uh, reduce the need for additional angiotic projection uh, acquisition, and associate contrast dose, radiation exposure, and procedure time. The short analysis time and high diagnostic accuracy of nuclear fire can facilitate, facilitate the adoption of routine uh, physiological assessment in the test lab. And thank you for your attention. That was an excellent presentation. And I uh, would like to ask uh, our panel here, maybe two of you are authors on this and have published multiple times in this area over the last two years. Um, it seems like the field is getting a little crowded to somebody like myself. I'm really thrilled to see angiographic-based techniques to determine FFR, but we have FFR angio, we've got QFR, which uses computational fluid dynamics of CFD. We've got VFFR and now CAFFR, which has computational pressure flow dynamics derived FFR. What is so special, better, different about QFR? What are specific strengths or weaknesses that differentiate it? And I'd open the field to either of you, Dr. Tu, Dr. Tu. Okay, perhaps I can explain uh, from my perspective what's the difference. Uh, I think indeed, the, so in order to calculate the FR, uh, there are two important, uh, important um, called boundary conditions. So first you need to do a reliable uh, reconstruction of the vessel anatomy, or we call it geometry model. Uh, so this would, um, I think the, uh, the solution we have now is uh, uh, more, more automatic. And as I demonstrate there, that uh, the new QFR or new QFR uh, allows also side range reconstruction. So this is important to get a, a reliable uh, reconstruction of reference, ve reference vessel, uh, which is important for vitification reason. Uh, because for vitification reason, if you assume a linear tabling reference vessel, then you will have a overestimation of severity uh, down uh, uh, distal to the bifurcation and uh, underestimation of the severity proximal to the bifurcation core. Uh, second boundary condition is the, uh, the flow. So uh, most solutions are using the uh, contrast tie uh, to estimate hyperlimic flow. So with these two uh, boundary condition, then uh, the last question is to solve the equation, so either by computational flow dynamic or flow dynamic equation. So this would be a uh, difference among different, among different techniques. Uh, in, our ex in my experience that, um, so uh, the validation is very important and it needs to be uh, validated uh, extensively for such kind of a computational uh, FFR solution. And so far, uh, according to the literature that 
uh, I believe that QFR has the most uh, evidence so far. And also, uh, Dr. Xi lead the Fable 3 China study. I think it's the first one to compute the, uh, complete the, uh, the outcome study uh, prospectively uh, around the most trail. So this is my personal perspective. Uh, Dr. Zhu, uh, if you, I may, I think uh, I, I may add a sentence. I think the single projection and geography derived the physiology should be the future. So that's the main implication of this uh, uh, paper. No, it's tremendous. And the correlation exceeding 92, 93% is, is remarkable. But how does this technology do in tandem uh, lesions in series? Um, you mentioned bifurcation. Is it competitive in bifurcation? That's been one of the concerns previously is its performance in bifurcation and in tandem lesions. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, using uh, computational physiology like a nuclear farm, in mm, the bifurcation procedure is extremely important because why, uh, pressure wire based uh, physiology doesn't work well to, uh, from my point of view because uh, even the, the, the QFR, you can use QF, new QFR during the whole process of the procedure to calculate to the side branch QFR in the beginning, during the procedure and post procedure. And the whole, uh, each of the points can provide important clinical uh, uh, procedural information and therefore improve your outcome. I don't know if my point is uh, acceptable. How, how many of the lesions, you're using a single view, how many of the lesions are really eccentric versus more concentric? And does that impact? the, the uh, accuracy? A good question. Uh, maybe I can, <laughs> I can add some comment here. So first, the, the, I want to respond to your previous question first, the theory lesion. So we have indeed a uh, large portion of the lesion uh, have, uh, have theory lesion. Uh, so in clinical routine, as you can imagine that uh, many of the case will not be isolated lesion, will be uh, two or three theory lesion, tandem lesion. And we also have a paper recently uh, accepted for publication in JAHA, invested in QFR in, uh, in, in theory lesion. So the, um, I think that, um, so QFR is not completely the same as the uh, uh, FR. The crosstalk between lesion is less uh, in QFR compared to the FR, because the FR you need hy uh, hyperlimic uh, conditions. So the crosstalk, uh, uh, the crosstalk uh, phenomenon in flow up more in uh, FR, but less in QFR. So in, if you have a two very severe lesion, uh, tandem lesion, then you will tend to have a smaller QFR compared to FR. However, you can easily plan, the, uh, you can easily calculate or use easy, easily um, predict the FR standing the first lesion by QFR. Uh, so this is the advantage of the QFR in theory lesion. And second, uh, the uh, bifurcation lesion, uh, as Dr. Xu mentioned, that uh, it's now more simplified because in the single view QFR, you can obtain the QFR in main vessel and side branch uh, at the same time. Uh, so we have uh, the favor to China study was not uh, particularly for uh, bifurcation uh, side branch lesion. But in the main vessel, we, we, we do have a, uh, quite some patient which has bifurcation lesion in the main vessel, but not involving the side branch. So the validation against the main vessel and side branch need to be performed in future study. So this would be the uh, quick response to your previous question. Sorry for interrupt. Oh, I think that's very good. I'd ask you, Dr. Wins. Uh... William, uh, you've looked at FFR post-intervention. The application of this technology has not been there yet. You're showing us in favor three China that it's predictive of clinical outcomes. Um, and I think that's, that's a necessary step. But 
this is pre-intervention. And now, have you looked at it post-intervention where now FFR and other micro uh, circulatory uh, dysfunction like IMR, uh, coronary flow resistance, reserve. Um, these are um, aspects, coronary microvascular dysfunction. Have you looked at the application of this technology either post-intervention or in microvascular dysfunction? William, how do you see that working out? Uh, thank you, Dean. Um... I agree what what uh, Dr. Chubo said. I really think that the future of physiology is is image based, and we're learning that there is so much information hidden in good quality angiograms that we can really use it for all the purposes you mentioned. Of course, for diagnosis of stenosis severity, but also for uh, post PCI results. I mean, the main reason why wire-based physiology failed, if I can say so, after decades of trying to convince you and everybody else that it needed to be used, is because, you know, physicians, we don't think we need it. Now, this is going to be available at the same time as the angiogram and inherently co-registered with the angiogram. You were mentioning about serial lesions. You actually see the you know, where is the pressure drop along the vessel from the ostium to the apex? So the post PCI is, is of course, equally, equally useful here. It allows to identify whether any residual obstacle is located within the stent or outside the stent. And what's been shocking to any of us who've been looking at good angiographic results post PCI is that 20%, 25% are far from optimal. So before blaming microcirculation, you need to be sure that we've done the right job. And um, that's where, you know, what Chubo has shown with the uh, planning and the virtual stenting, that's even better. You know, if, if you do your micro QFR pre PCI, and then with virtual reality, you implement, you implant say a 3528 and you compute what the result will be in in terms of function that's probably even better than chasing you know small gradients after the fact and i really can anticipate that all these image-based um, analyses will be integrated automatically in the information that we will you know consider all together to eventually make make the right decision and very briefly your question about microcirculatory yes there is there is ways to actually compute an index of microcirculatory resistance that prof2 is called amr from the angiogram and you may want to explain uh sandven how that works it, it is a little bit like the pressure based or wire based imr Yes, uh, so methodology point of view. So in a QFR calculation, you have the pressure, you have the flow. So the resistance is just using the uh, pressure, the pressure divided by the flow velocity. So it's like the old uh, Doppler uh, measurement. Uh, re regarding the uh, post procedure, uh, post standing uh, 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 QFR, we just have a new funding which uh, uh, for by using the new QFR. Uh, I think the bifurcation is different. Uh, non left wing bifurcation uh, is completely different to the left wing bifurcation. But when we calculate more than 1,200 left wing bifurcation standing in after procedure, angiographically very acceptable results. But if the Re, uh, I mean, the post procedure QFR of the circumflex is less than uh, 0 0.80. With this will associate with uh, increased mortality. Another thing you've described here tonight is the mu uh, QFR is calculated one minute. In favor three China, correct me if I'm wrong, the QFR computation averaged 3.9 minutes. 
you've been able to condense that with this uh, improvement in technology to one minute. And uh, two uh, data from two major studies, one favor to uh, China, favor to Europe, and as well as from the favor three China, large random trial. Uh, we can conclude that using the first generation QFR, the calculation time will be around uh, four minutes. Uh, but for new QFR, uh, uh, we are confident within one minute, we can finish the calculation. I, I think uh, there's a major improvement. But so, the, secret, the secret, Dean, is good quality angiogram and the right projection. And you've seen those boxes with the proposed projection for the different vessels. And that's really the discipline that we should have to make sure that we take those good quality angiograms in the right projection. That's the secret to obtain this level of accuracy with micro QFR. Yeah. But uh, when we see the uh, screen failure of the favor three data, screen failure data of the favor three trial, we can see around 3% of the patient, uh, of the screen patient uh, failed due to uh, uh, poor and angiography and angiogram. And another 3.4% of the patient cannot be enrolled because uh, some tortures overlapping uh, depend on two projection. So I think uh, it's a uh, very important tool. You know, I might ask all of you, um, for those that have been around reading angiograms and coronaries for a long time, William, a video densitometry, how can that, is it of any interest in adding that to what you're doing? We look at a lesion, and if the density of contrast is diminished in the lesion, assuming homogeneous mixing, we think that the volume in that lesion is less. Therefore, the severity of stenosis is greater. And that's one of the things that I've always looked at when I'm looking at angiograms. Can you add that to this technology? Can it be added? And would it potentially enhance the sensitivity and particularly specificity? Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll give a shot at your question, and then maybe Sanven can um, complement it. I, I think that the, what the video densitometry can, can add is something about the flow. But we have the Timmy flow or something that's equivalent to the Timmy flow here, uh, the frame rate count incorporated in the measurements. So, you know, for having, having looked at it like yourself and even attempted some quantitative measurements, I, I, I don't think we really need it in this particular case. Again, if the angiogram is of good quality with sharp contours and the vessel is filled entirely during, you know, full cardiac cycle. Sanven, is that, is that a correct answer? Yes, uh, I think that uh, I have the same view. Um, I, I think that's commentary uh, in theory, it, it seems that you can add information. Uh, however, if you um, uh, want to use that in QFR computation, so we are estimating mainly the average flow velocity. And if you add the den uh, density to the analysis there, then that will be depending more on the contrast injection. Uh, because nowadays, if you inject less contrast, they, they will mix with the blood flow, blood and also contrast. So you can still estimate the, uh, the flow velocity. Uh, like if you want to take that into com com computation, then uh, it will depend on the amount of contrast you are injecting and the, the vessel size as well. So maybe it's not uh, really helping. So similar as similar um, thing we have been observing in this, this uh, uh, study, in theory, two projections will, in, will add more information as people imagine. But the reality, the practical, practical thing is that uh, you assume that two projections will have uh, optimal quality. Uh, but uh, in reality, that you, you have one optimal quality and the other one is less optimal. So if you include a suboptimal projection that might not necessarily improve the accuracy. It might decrease the accuracy if the second view is less optimal. So this is the uh, practical finding and also the theoretical finding. <laughs>
Well, I think this uh, paper rep represents a significant advance in angiography-based FFR measurements. And I'd like, uh, I'm glad that it's in Jay Sky. And I'd ask uh, any of our panel to make closing comments. Are there any closing comments or points that you'd want to make that haven't been made during this? Okay, I'm going to try some feature that uh, in this paper. I think first of all, single view PFR will improve the feasibility. And also uh, in this uh, single view PFR, we add the cybrance analysis there. So the bifurcation analysis will be more efficient because then you only need one uh, one time computation in order to get the PFR in the main vessel in cybrance. In the past, you need to do multiple uh, multiple um, uh, analysis and that would increase the, the computational time, but now it's much easier. And second, as you mentioned that in some uh, patient with microcirculation bias function, uh, actually the immune QFR will have the uh, micro resistance index, we call it AMR, uh, simultaneously available after the QFR computation. So this would allow future study to investigate the correlation between resistance and also epicardio vessel stenosis. And the last uh, conclusion is that uh, I think that the single view QFR has uh, comparable accuracy as uh, two view QFR. This is the most important finding of the study so that would support the use of the single view QFR in the future to facilitate clinical adoption. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Zhu. Yeah, uh, I think uh, even the uh, naturally uh, uh, simply. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, simplicity and safety of this uh, uh, computational physiology uh, technology, a uh, technique. And uh, uh, with uh, the increasing developing clinical data, clinical evidence, uh, I'm still believe this will be the future. Uh, William? Oh, just one comment? word. Um, thank you, and and thanks to Jay Sky for for um, you know publishing and uh, having such a nice nice paper in in very very fast um, very quick time. Just one word. Um, what's amazing to me with this unraveling of the hidden gem from the angiogram is that we're making this information available to each and all of us. Every cardiologist, interventional cardiologist or invasive cardiologist has the angiogram. And I, you know, not only will this um, give everybody access to functional tests that otherwise, you know, would require adenosine wires, etc. But also it may help us to direct the use of, for instance, imaging to those cases who need it the most based on suboptimal functional results, for instance. And we didn't even talk about, about strain measurements that can also be obtained now from the angiogram. So this is fascinating to see that the, the applicability at large, globally, you know, we're talking about our colleagues in China, of this information for every cardiologist, that to me is really important to improve patient care and outcome. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank each of you for your time and your contribution this evening and Jay Sky for giving us this opportunity to be interviewed. Thank you.